Zimbabwean-born and now U.S.-based award-winning humanitarian and former United Nations senior advisor on gender equality, Elizabeth Nyamayaro's memoir is out. Titled, I Am a Girl from Africa, this book vividly details the author's extraordinary life of persevering through incredible odds and finding her true calling while delivering an important message of hope and empowerment in a time when most need it. Well, Elizabeth joins me now via Zoom to tell us more about her journey as she shares it in this offering. Liz, a very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to Morning Live. Good morning, Sapiwe. Thank you so much for having me. Good having you on this show this morning. What was it that planted the idea in your head to compile your life's journey into a memoir? I wanted to really inspire the millions of girls on our African continent to see what's possible when we dare to dream big and make a difference in the lives of others. My own journey began in a small village in Zimbabwe where I was raised by my gogo, and I had a dream to become a humanitarian and chased that dream against all odds until I became a senior advisor at the United Nations in New York City. And I wanted those young girls to be able to see that, you know, where we are born should not limit our ability to dream big. And so this was really the inspiration for the book. And I see the color yellow has a deeper meaning for you, also, you know, apparent on the book's jacket. Tell us more about the significance of this. Yellow is my favorite color because it I reminds me of the... It is. It's, it's just the beautiful African yellow skies I used to wake up to in my small village. Mm. And so it's my small way of taking a piece of Africa with me because here's something that I've learned over all these years, having left the African continent and traveled around the world working as a humanitarian, is that being African is truly the best part of who I am. And so it's really important for me to always be anchored in where I come from. And speaking of the yellow skies that have just, uh, you know, so articulately mentioned, take us back to your eight-year-old self growing up in Zimbabwe in the village of Goromonzi and how drought and hunger changed the trajectory of the life of Elizabeth that we see today. Yes, I mean, I had a beautiful childhood. I grew up in this small village in Zimbabwe where we never wanted for anything because we grew in abundance of food. We took care of each other like most African communities do. But sadly, when I turned eight, a severe drought hit our village and left us with nothing to eat or drink. And one day I was so weak from hunger that I was unable to move. And in this moment, I actually thought I was going to die. But this incredible miracle happened. A fellow African who was an elder sissy, which is the word for sister in my language of Shona, found me. She gave me a bottle of porridge and saved my life. And it turns out that she was a humanitarian with the United Nations. And that's the moment uh, that really sparked my dream to become a humanitarian. I remember thinking, well, I too just want to be like her so that maybe one day I too can save the lives of others. And I'm really, really grateful that God gave me the opportunity to become a humanitarian. And I've now been doing this work for more than two decades. And what's more important is you discovering your own sense of purpose for the benefit of others. You know, you wrote this memoir to inspire others to join the good fight in creating a better world for all of us. Speak to us more about this. Yes, indeed. I mean, even just talking about the issue of hunger, you know, the United Nations World Food Programme has the statistics that even today, hunger remains the leading cause of death in the world, whereby a child dies every five seconds. So, mm. I mean, the work is enormous that needs to happen. And I realized as a humanitarian at some point that there's only so much change that I can do as one person, right, to create a better world. And so why not use some of the experience and use the stories of community activism that I've seen around the world and hopefully inspire inspire more of us to see what's possible and to realize that we all have a role to play in making a difference in the lives of those around us. So that's also part of the inspiration for this book, to hopefully have more of us looking around our own communities and saying, what can I do to make a difference in the lives of others? And what we've just raised now, I think uh, it ties in well with the African philosophy of the spirit of Ubuntu. Tell us what this means yes. to you and how it sort of shaped how you view life today. 
So this is so profound, right? Our African philosopher of Ubuntu, the recognition that we are all connected by our shared humanity. Mm -hmm. And I remember even as young as six years old, my gogo -go explaining to me, first of all, what it meant to dream, you know, through this lens of Ubuntu, that we had to make sure that our dreams didn't just belong to ourselves but there, there were also a dream for others, a dream for our community. So when you recognize that you're part of a community, it's also the responsibility that lies on your shoulder to say, what can I do to uplift the lives of my community? And so the book is anchored in this African philosophy of Ubuntu, which I don't think is only needed for ourselves as Africans, but really for the rest of the world. And I think that as Africans, we can, we can contribute in a significant way to how the world views each other, especially right now with the current COVID pandemic, where we have actually seen that indeed what impacts one part of the world can indeed impact all of us, right? And as Africans, we've always known this. And I'm really, really proud that in this moment of need, something great and profound from Africa like Ubuntu can be the healing that the world needs. And having explored the different parts of the globe, has your definition of what being an African means? Yes, I mean, so what's really fascinating is that I remember landing in London uh, in my mid-20s in pursuit of my dream to work for the United Nations, and suddenly I had this fish out of water moment because I realized that people held these sort of preconceived notions of what it means to be an African and it was not positive you know a lot of the people that saw me as an African saw me as lesser than they saw me as inferior and also the portrayal of Africa through this single narrative lens of poverty was very jarring to me because I remember thinking well that's not who we are <laughs> you know as Africans we don't define ourselves by the enormity of our challenges but by our resilience and there's so much beauty to be celebrated uh, in the African continent and so I also wanted to you know the book's title I am a girl from Africa is a proclamation right that there's something beautiful about being African and I hope that you know the world recognizes that as much as we know ourselves as Africans. You know, as we celebrated Africa Day, you know, just a couple of days ago, and I've always wondered, Elizabeth, whether people know what it means being an African apart from just showing off African outfits and uh, whether they attach a deeper meaning to being an African. Uh, and what are you hoping this book would do for young people, especially young girls from around the continent who may find themselves in the shoes of the eight-year-old Elizabeth growing up in Zimbabwe? I hope the book inspires them, right, to know that being African really is a true blessing, as my Gogo -go used to say, because, you know, I can say this from sort of evidence-based, right? I've traveled around the globe, I've worked in different cultures, and time and time again, when I come back to the African continent, and I've traveled as well across the continent with my work, I'm always uplifted by why I, what I see in communities and there is this bond that we share as Africans. And even when, you know, you will end up in a village and the people will have very little, but they are always willing to share the little that they have. And I think we might sometimes take that for granted, that this is the way that things are. And I can tell you that it's not the way things are. There are times when I'm in New York City and I think if I fall, no one will catch me. And I can guarantee you that I've never felt that way on the African continent. So I think it's just a reminder that actually, who we are is a really, really beautiful thing, something we should embrace, and, and more so that we should really look at this as a way to contribute to our own communities because we are the heroes of our own stories. No one is coming to save us. Neither do we need anyone to save us, right? So that's the recognition that I hope people take away from this. Oh, Elizabeth, you are the best, and your views on life are absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us. Thank you so much for having me. Well, that was our guest author this morning, Elizabeth Nyama Nyamayaro, and we've been unpacking her published memoir titled, I Am a Girl from Africa.